Um, so I'm going to do a presentation on it now. Um, basically, the idea for this project is that, like, I'm a computer science major and a game design major in R at RPI, and I thought I would come here and I'd have one semester, and then I'd be making like full 3D games, all the business. Turns out, not that's not quite how it happened. Um, so I thought well, I have a cool few ideas, um, but I can't really implement the, them on the computer, so that leads to sad face. Um, so really, the big question that kind of led to this project is. How do you take someone who kind of knows the basics of programming, and in this context, it's pretty much a lot of C++ because that's what we learned here at RPI, and take them from the command line to a graphical game. So my solution that I um, kind of stumbled upon this summer was SFML. And SFML is really cool because it's simple, fast, and it's a media layer. So it's uh, I've used SDL in the past, and that um, syntax is kind of weird, and it's a little hard to get into, but SML is a little more lightweight and pretty easy to get started with. Uh, the one caveat of SML is that it works in conjunction. Like, you can use it with a command line, but there's a lot of setup, so the easiest way to use it, what their tutorials are set up for, is using it with an IDE. And because I run a Windows computer, the one I chose is um, Visual Studio, but also it works with code blocks. And those are the <coughs> ones that I'm going to mention. Um, the pros of Visual Studio is that it has IntelliSense, which is really nice when you're programming because like, you think, oh, well, this object may be able to do something like this, but I'm not actually sure whether or not it has a method for that. So you can just type it in, have your little double colon there, and then it'll come up with a list of things that you can do with it. Um, I really like the debugger on it, and I use that pretty often because my logic is not pristine at times, and also it's very easy to run and compile once you have it set up. Now the cons are, it's a pain to set up. Um, there's a lot of stuff you have to do in the property sheet. When you get an error, like linker errors are horrible, you get really cryptic error messages sometimes, so that's not good. Um, the goals of this project were basically, I wanted to have a really detailed uh, tracking of my process. Um, basically what this amounted to was, um, after I can have a little quick tutorial on getting started with SFML, just the bare basics, getting it set up. And then I go into making a few different games with it. And for those games, I just wanted to, you know, clearly document my um, thought process and stuff like that. And hopefully I can all tap away from this. And I don't go to Project Runway. Um, so here's my project log. Uh, it's a Google Doc. And right now it's about 100 pages on Google Docs. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of code in here. Um, I did some art, which I'm not that good at. But um, like I'm just showing the evolution of like the games as they've been written, and I'm trying to you know walk everyone through. If you don't necessarily have experience with like inheritance and polymorphism and like pointer techniques, you know, I wanted to go over all that and um, really make it is easy. public. Yes, yeah. public. Right? Yeah, this is public. Um, there's links to it everywhere, like I have a blog with, I link to it every post, and um, my repository is yeah. public. Um, so there's that. Um, and then my second goal was to start making unconventional games. If you look online, I'm sure you'll find thousands of examples of platformers and like basic side-scrolling shooters and stuff like that. I wanted to kind of come at stuff from a different angle and do stuff I hadn't really seen a lot before, so I did. Um, and also, I guess it was better to work on more obscure types of projects. Um, my last goal was to stretch myself personally as a programmer, and if you don't recognize that guy, it's Stretch Armstrong. Um, so also I tried to do that. Uh, the first game I made was an arcade style game called um, Eskimo Fighter, and um, I can show you it. Um, this game used a lot of polymorphism because you basically have your base fighter class and then their base special technique, but then all the different fighters I have, and now I only have two, so it's not super impressive, but um, all the different fighters have different techniques that act differently. So there's a lot of you know, uh, virtual <coughs> and abstract uh, base classes and stuff like that with that. So to run this, pretty cool. Uh, it locks you in the screen for a sec, and then you can choose your fighter. Right now I have myself, because obviously everyone wants to see themselves in a fighting game. And then I have my friend Dan. So I'll choose myself for player one. 
and Danford Flare too. Um, so really the display isn't that impressive because I was more um, concerned with like the programming of it and like I said, uh, it takes a really long time to like draw artwork and I'm not that great at it. Um, but you know, you have basic movement which is inherited from the base class. Uh, your movement and your basic attacks which are punch and block and kick are um, all in the base class and then you have a special attack and mine's actually Kamehameha Wave. <laughs> so then a we'll block against that. And now uh, Dan's special attack is a hog that kind of swoops in. And this was kind of interesting to program because um, I had to like dynamically generate parabolas based on positioning and stuff like that. Um, so I guess I'll come over here and just kill Dan real quick. <laughs> and then it gives you the option to play again. So pretty simple there. <laughs> Uh, nothing, it was my first game, so I kind of wanted to start out with something that I knew I could accomplish, something that I wouldn't crash and burn on. Um, the next game I moved on to was, uh, this is explaining kind of what I explained before. Uh, and for the special attacks, it's kind of interesting, because like as you can see, nothing from the base class is actually used. It's all virtual, so you're counting on, you know, you have to kind of normalize what parameters you're passing to your, um, you know, more specialized classes. So this is for my Kamehameha Wave special attack. And then um, one thing that you learn in game design that's really important is triangularity of powers. So um, I didn't really show you this or demonstrate this, but basically a kick breaks a block. Um, a block will stun a punch, and a punch is faster than a kick, so it beats a kick. So that's just whatever. Uh, the next game I worked on is called God of Fire. And this is a uh, top-down game where you play a God of Fire in your city. Is becoming corrupted by evil monks, so you have to set your faithful monks on fire and kind of uh, kamikaze them. So. Uh, well, <laughs> so in the previous one, is it easy to model uh, rock, pip, rock, paper, scissors game with this? And, uh... Uh, yeah, it was fairly easy. Uh, the one thing that kind of breaks your rock, paper, scissors is special attacks, which has more no, complicated... No, no. I, I said about rock, paper, scissors game. Do you know what rock, paper, scissors yeah. is? it easy to model that? and? Uh, because um, there is also a, have you, there is the game that is uh, in the New York Times science section, so they have how the strategy works and so on. So there is also a learning of how, how the other player plays and then you make the strategy. Yeah, out. that's definitely like a big, like if you play the same player a lot of times, then you'll find Oh, uh, well, like, I kind of know your strategy, and I'll be able to get the uh, jump on you. Yeah, against a particular player, you can do your learning. Yes. Um, okay, so this game, as you can see, those are the graphics. So those mugs are things I drew. And, again, not too impressive. Um, one, I actually ran into a couple of interesting programming problems with this game. The first was pathing. And I actually, uh, I'm glad I took more of these class because I was able to um, implement Dijkstra's algorithm to deal with that because as you can see there's like walls and stuff and like each monk uh, they're moving around on the screen and they have a, like a secret destination so if this guy's secret destination is over there he has to know oh well I need to like come all the way around there to get there. Um, another problem with this game is I was building it on my PC which isn't super fast. It actually runs better on my laptop um, so I was having some problems with processor impact and just drawing so many frames uh, per per, per second. Um, so I rewrote my um, drawing so that I was just dynamically drawing and like really updating what you needed, like what was relevant at the time. And then I started implementing fire. Um, basically there was just a wave of fire that would just spread across the entire map and then just like bounce back at you. So um, I said change stuff with that and then that led to some class coded dependency problems. So kind of interesting things that I wasn't really expecting. Oh. Um, and then I, I'll, get, I'll show you guys this one real quick. I don't know why it's not built. Um, okay, never mind. I won't show you guys that one. <laughs> um, and some limitations I've run into for this project is because I'm, I'm doing it solo, like I only have my experience to draw off of. Um, and I have, as you have seen, uh, limited artistic ability. Um, a lot of times, like, especially with the second uh, God of Fire project, it's a lot bigger than um, Espinal Fighter. 
So it becomes really more difficult to document. Like if I'm um, doing a big change, a lot of times I'll change stuff and like because I was implementing something this way before and now I'm implementing it this way. So it's hard to say, okay, well, and they use like 10 different functions. I had to change one line of code. And then I haven't uh, really attempted to do any kind of release build. So right now, uh, if you want to run it, it's, you have to do a lot of stuff on your own computer. Um, Projects on the Horizon is um, Code Words, which is a word game, and it's like crosswords, but you don't have any hints. Um, each t each letter corresponds to a number, and the tiles are numbered. So um, looking at like the patterns of word construction and like where the intersections are, you have to basically crack the code and figure out where all the words go. This is actually a British game. Um, I didn't come up with it. Um, but um, Nimit, um, Dulacar, who is a grad student here at RPI, he um, he actually wrote a crossword generation um, algorithm that he's kind of letting me use. So um, I'm looking forward to incorporating that into my project. And then after that, I kind of want to do a bigger project, so maybe a dungeon crawler RPG. Um, oh, and also with SFML, the sky's the limit. So <laughs> I just that's it. The end. Any questions? Also, thank you. Yes. How do you know Nimit? Um, actually, it's kind of weird. I played against him in my um, intramural soccer team, and then I started like, as I was coming home from that, I was um like looking up on Google like some hints for algorithm generation, and then his was like the first one that came up, and I'm like, oh, I played you. Can I use your code? It's really cool. Yeah. Yes. Will that crossword stuff be open source too? Because I, I don't know like how proprietary it is. Yeah, I actually, um, I asked him. I, that's probably something that I should uh, research more because I asked him and he did say that his intent had always been for it to be open source and then I could certainly use it. But it was for an RPI class that he um, generated for, so that's something that I will need to look into. I just want to comment. I thought your art was great. I can't draw it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you.